y'all, homeless guy pulled a knife on me. Loaf keeps saying, like, literally, two weeks ago is his last video. Angry, drunk guy attacks us. Now it's a homeless guy pulls a knife out on you. Come on, gang. What are you doing, gang? You got to chill. Stay strapped. But we love Loaf over here, man. All right, guys, so it's NBA playoff season. The Timberwolves play today here in Minneapolis. Game one against the... I forgot. Minnesota. Loaf is from there, so at least he has some excitement in basketball. Loaf probably doesn't even really know who Anthony Edwards is, but... Sons. I'm not huge into basketball, but I know you're are from Minnesota, obviously, so I'm definitely cheering for them. And Minnesota sports teams kind of suck ass, so it's kind of a rare occasion we get to have a good team in the playoffs. <laughs> Look at all the fans. <laughs> all the Timberwolves fans out here, man. There's so much to film out here. Look at this. I wasn't expecting it to be so lit out here. What are they shooting over here? Damn, they got that camera so close to his face. They're going to see every pore on his face. How you doing? Nice to meet you. Yeah, what happened at the oh yeah, that was fucked up, huh? Yeah, yeah. I'm YouTube. I'm about to be a uh, content creator too. Oh, are you? Hell yeah. What content are you gonna make? Picking people up. Picking people up? Like girls? No, I mean like people in general. There's a lot of people speak. The government is not for us. We need to create our own government. You don't fuck with Biden? Hell no. <laughs> What's your name? David. Nice to meet you, David. Nice to meet you, man. <laughs> oh, that's why. He's not gonna steal your stuff. David's a good guy, trust me. Why is he breaking etiquette, man? Well, why is he breaking etiquette? He should be 25 feet away. David's my guy, though. David can stay where he wants. If you try to throw hands with David, I gotta take his back. He's my guy now. He's breaking the rules, though. What can say? What's the, what's the rules, though? It's an etiquette to me. Just educate me, though. I don't know the etiquette. It's the laws that like, keep us from violence. Oh, he in your corner? He's right next to me. Oh, hey. Get out of here, get out of here. He's right fucking here. Hey, David, David, you gotta back up a little bit. Yeah. This is his corner, bro. That's, this is his block. This is his block. I didn't know. I'm just trying to keep you safe, you know? You want to defend someone who's wrong, and you will be wrong for it, too. Oh, I didn't know. And I got someone who's younger, who's 20 fucking four. Right he doesn't come and throw his bag within reads of mine. Whose bag is that? That's it. They do that so they come and steal shit. I fucking kill we'll give it a count. Oh, oh shit. Oh shit. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. Mm. I got you. I got you. I'm sorry about that. I appreciate you. My first buddy was when I was 15. Really? Damn. I'm about to get the fuck away from him. He said he caught a body at 15. You got to get away from him. I'm out. I'm out. He wins. He said I caught my first body. That man was. That man was serious. Like, y'all. It's sad, though. It's got that bad for him, but. Loaf was over playing like, yeah, 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 he's my guy. There's no problem. He said, nah, it's etiquette. He's like, nah, 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 he's good. Loaf, why was you trying to get stabbed? And then this is why <laughs> Loaf trying to say, he's like, I've been on the street since I was 15. He's like, you know, the first time I killed somebody when I was 15, I'd be like, oh, yeah, I'm good. I'm okay. I don't, I'm, I'm good. Like, why do y'all be messing with old dudes, man? I pray for a dude in his mind, though, said, because that's kind of like... Crazy, but Uck was <laughs> That man was ready to stab him. And David, I didn't know David was less fortunate. Because we don't really say that. Less fortunate, but, um, man, that he was less fortunate. Hopefully you do make that content, David. But, man, that that's scary. I'm running away. As soon as some dude say, you know how long I've been here? How long? 17 years old. You know when I kill somebody? 17 years old. You know, the last time I killed somebody, how they're like, how old am I? They were like, I'm 31. So I killed somebody when I turned 31. That's all he had to say. First of all, like they said, at 15, I would have walked off. I'm scared. I'm terrified. At 15, I don't want to be a second. Excuse me, officers, I'd like to report a murder. Anthony Edwards is going to murder the Suns defense today. <laughs> Are y'all Wolves fans? I was like, where's the, where's yeah. the punch? You are? Where's the punch Let's go. Be? Let's get that win today, all right, guys? <laughs> yeah, Let's go. Yeah, you Anthony Edwards went crazy. Oh, shit. This is a little old, but yeah, he already swept the Suns. KD went to Cancun, so did Brian. Oh, oh shit. Oh. Stop the violence. This place is called Kicker Nick. If you say that too fast, that could sound like a racial slur. Oh, you gotta say Nick Kicker. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> are y'all going to Kicker Nick later? My name is Nate Hager, and I hate Bro, this guy. <laughs> Rate the fit. Shorts over the sweatpants. Yeah, that's major drip, especially in Minnesota. That is some drip right there. If this was Kevin Gates right here, this is what Golden would do. Whoa. That's it. This was the tip. That's all I did. <laughs> he spit on that's that shit. Did. This was Kevin Gates. No diddy, bro. What? I'd use two hands, too. 
That's gonna look real crazy in some edit. Go, 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 go. Nah, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's busting the nuts. Anybody <laughs> 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 just just experience what he's talking about? Busting the fat nuts. That would know. He looked at me dead in my eyes like, no, we're going this way. They were walking towards us and they looked and they pointed out and they're like, no, we're going that way. <laughs> hey, brother, who's your favorite rapper? Playboy Cardi. If he was here, would you grab the hips? Nah, man. Nah? For a million dollars? Nah. Nah? Not for a million. I'm not gonna lie, bro. I'm spit shining that for a million. I'm gonna go two hands and everything. That's crazy. All right, guys, we're about to head inside the Target Center right now for the game. At this point, I'd love to give a quick shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Prize Picks. Prize Picks. That's game. Stay on my using Prize Picks for the projection offers. What's up? Deposit one. Deposit man. Ups in. Yesterday was Rush Ball in this game. This the first game he really dropped the ball. Alright guys, so NLE Chapa has a show tonight in Minneapolis. He hit me up like, I think over a year ago and just said he likes the videos. And you know, he's dope. He's a good artist. I like his music. So he invited us to come to the show tonight here in Minnesota. So we're pulling up here right now. How you doing? Ben, nice to meet you. You look like you locked in, bro. Yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. How long you been on the road, bro? How long you been here? Just a night? Just a night? been good, man. This your second time, third time in Minnesota? Third? I mean, in a league. In a league got no type of energy. It's awkward. I understand. He's probably been on the road the long, longest. It's like, this does not look like what in said. Like, I love his videos and everything. As soon as he dapped away, he's like, did him with that. Then they sit down. He like, then he looks up. You still here? Shut up. <laughs> He feel like they all yapping to him. <laughs> Italy, come on, man. I understand you probably been there too long. You tired, whatever. You locked in, but come on, bro. You you watch his vids. You cool with it, bro. You give Kaisa Nat more crackhead energy doing all that. Shut up, look at <laughs> Like, where that at? Italy look like he go pop them. Like, they keep talking. I'm going to shoot you. Shut up. Italy looks so angry, bro. He just sitting there. He said, how long you been here? Tomorrow. How long is it called? I'm like, man. I'm like, this would be my first and my last time talking to him. Like, seriously, you acting like that, I'm not talking to Brody no more. Like, I'm like, okay, so who pissed in your Cheerios? Are you okay? How you like it, though, bro? Performing on all these people? Is it it's surreal? Yeah, yeah. So what's your next stop? Yeah, there's nothing in Nebraska. You're gonna be performing for some farm animals out there. You look comfortable, bro. You look like you're ready to go to bed. <laughs> Got the slippers on and everything. How long you said you've been on the road? Look at it. It's just mad awkward. This is like he's sitting there on his phone, just like I get it. This probably was like maybe his 11th third show. I don't need people like. You're not going to be smiling all the time. I get that. But the thing is, you inviting me out to your show. At least act like you care. That man, like, it's literally awkward. Like, I'm just sitting here in the room. Like, bro, this is my first time meeting you, gang. How do you like uh, performing at colleges versus, like, big venues and shit, bro? I, I, well, so, uh, I feel like the, the college girls fuck with you a lot. You like snow bunnies, though? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of them out there. I saw them walking in. Depends on the, on your appetite. What you hungry for now? Are you? Just trying to focus. That's what's up. 
and he's capping, and Goten got to sit there and ask him all these questions. This is awkward. This is making me cringe. And then Goten keeps trying to ask him questions. Like, oh. Who do you think's going to win the finals this year? You haven't been watching? You ever seen the Breakfast Club Kodak Black interview? That's what this feels like right now. And I'm already an awkward dude in general, so this is hard for me, guys. I'm trying, I swear. I'm gonna pop up the text I sent you. <laughs> bro, you're more extroverted than me. You guys don't understand how much of an introvert I am, bro. I got social anxiety like a motherfucker. This is pulling teeth for me to try to get this flowing. So I, I, I looked at this guy. He's gotta throw me the lob like Chris Paul, bro. Man. He's locked in, though. Look at him. Yeah. He looks like Kobe before a big game. I don't even want to disrupt him. You know what would be funny, though? What if he was listening to, like, Beethoven or some shit right now to hype himself up? <laughs> This man act like he could have go out there and drop 50 points the way that man. Yeah, yeah. yeah they're loyal. Yeah. I love them. You're another guy putting on for me, so. Yeah, you thank you. and JJ. I swear, if he gets traded around. Yeah, I'm gonna be pissed. I think he's just tired, man. I understand it though. He's on a bus all day traveling across the country. I know what that's like. When we take the big ass road trips, sometimes when we stop places, I'm just exhausted. I'm not in the mood to talk to anyone. It's gonna be funny as fuck though when I edit this video. I'm gonna put cricket noises over it. I'm starting to sweat, bro. I'm so awkward. You were sweating? And it's the fact that we're the only ones back here. We were like the important ones that got important enough to get back here and we still got disregarded. I don't want people to think I'm being disrespectful though. I'm not making fun of him or anything. I'm making fun of me more. Just the situation in general. <laughs> and he invited us. Man! <laughs> this guy's always gonna make it gay, bro. Always. This guy, bro. Every time we're, we're not even filming, bro, this guy makes the gayest like, remarks. Ask him what he would do to Kevin Gates if he saw him in person. To Kevin Gates. He said it first, not me. He said he would grab his hips. No, no, no. That's. <laughs> That's what he said he would do in the car today. Okay, can I defend myself a little mm -hmm. bit? Go ahead. All right, so Kevin Gates came up to me, right? Because I love Kevin Gates. You know I love Kevin Gates. I like Kevin if, Gates, if too. Kevin, you said if Kevin Gates came up to me and offered me a million dollars just to the tip. Oh, That's I'm not mad. what you said. You said you would do it for free. No, he said he would do it for free. I said I'd do it for a meal. <laughs> and not only for a meal, I'm grabbing a hip. And I'm, for, for a meal, I'm going to... Why do you even think about that? <laughs> I wasn't thinking I was offered like, what, that what scenario. The problem wasn't that you said you would do it. The problem is that you said confidently, I would grab his I'm hips. I'm grabbing the hip for and a meal? Would... And, and he made the noise. Too. And he made the noise. He made the noise. That, exactly. I love Kevin Gates. Yeah. Luca Brasi too is a classic album. But I'm not, I'm not. You I'm not, not doing that. That's where we like we draw that line. That's where we that's where we differ. Yeah. We can still love each other, but we have that boundary. Yeah. yeah. I'm not deep throwing Kevin Gates' dick. That's the boundary. <laughs> Kevin Gates' dick no, might as well different. be right here. It's His different. dick it's might different. as well be sitting right here. I'm doing this. Oh. <laughs> well, the only thing I have we to gotta say, bro, pack y'all up, bro. No <laughs> <dude>. It's, <laughs> it's like, the whoa. best promo right here. This is like whoa. Yeah. 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 There's a lot of shirtless college guys out here. Wait, I just realized and I just skipped. This is all copyright. I keep pressing zero, y'all. You're not finna get me, gang. Dude, right? He went viral for doing this, right? Oh, yeah. Right? He's gonna be coming this way. You're gonna be standing right here, and then y'all gonna walk, like, model walk towards each other. Y'all yeah, gonna hump at the crowd like this. You want me to do that? Yeah, that'll be a tough. I want this to be on the record. They made me do this. <laughs> bro, Lofi ain't got no stroke game. Man, what is you doing, young man? Your man said this. Uh, he's like, you like it? That's how he be doing his good. Like, you like it? He said, is it topping, baby? <laughs> that man look like a Middle Eastern man trying to get his free call. Is it working, baby? Yes. He said, yes, stroke. Stroke. This is... <laughs> 
<laughs> like he's humping more of his chest than his hips. <laughs> Why are you doing that? Oh man, that yeah, that had to be very awkward for him. I couldn't even do something like that. And Ali made me feel kind of fuzzy inside, man. He looked me right in my eyes when I did that. That was a hypnotic experience. Put a middle finger up. Put a middle finger up. If you're on this side, we're going to put a middle finger up. On the count of three, if you're on this side, we're going to say, fuck this side. One, two, three. Fuck this side. You know what I just noticed? I don't see one black person in this crowd. And I know damn well I heard everybody saying that in words. Thanks. I make porn. I'm number one on, on Jerkman. No, I'm number one on Jerkman. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's crazy you watch porn like that. Yeah, that is crazy. Uh, I'm just a big NLE fan because he has the song Slut Me Out. It connects with me, you know? That man is taking pictures and Loaf is not looking at all. And he's still going to post those. Like me and Loaf just chilling. He don't know you, little bro. He's not even looking. That's the most awkwardest thing to see in the background. He's sitting there like a parent, like. Like, you looking? He not looking. It's okay. One more time. And he's literally taking multiple, y'all. He's sitting there. And he gonna post it on his page. We, 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 we chilling. No, you're not. Delete it, Timothy. Stop. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, bro, at least let them pay attention. These be like those mom pictures. Like, oh my. Just put it on Facebook if you're going to take a picture like that, bro. Just pack him up. Nah, I'll be slutting him out. I'm gay, too. I make gay porn. Yeah. Oh, hey, that's what's yeah. up. That's what I'm saying. Like, Can I get a hug, man? Yeah, yeah, of course. My name's Juan, by the way. Juan, nice to meet you. I appreciate it. I love you so much. I love, I love you, too. You so How you doing, sir? Yeah, hurry up. We need, we need to get him out of here. Damn, we got President Snow in the picture. <laughs> what's up? I like my cell phone. You want me to go? Yeah. Uh, I don't want us to leave, bro. Yeah, that's cool. I don't care. Who? You want me to leave? You don't like Asian people? You can say that if you don't like Asian people, it's cool. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> He's a good actor, bro. You're in the wrong career field, bro. You need to be an actor. I swear I thought he was serious. I was like, yo, like, is he for real right now? He said, nah, bro, you can go. Like, why is you in here? That sounds like, oh shoot, True Colors came out. That was good, and only I give God you that. God damn. That was pretty cool, too. I pray, I actually God do damn. He looked at me like, you thought I was in. I, I didn't know what the fuck was going on, bro. Oh, you weren't in on it? I didn't know. It was, was just him? On. Bro, I didn't even know he was in it. For real, what's up? He always pray for people. Bro. Yeah, he got me. I'm not going to lie. He's good. He's good. You got to be a YouTuber, bro. God damn. I felt so bad. That shit was funny. <laughs> Thank you for having us for real. I appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate it. And I wanted you to I appreciate it. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> you know I got it on me, bro. You know I got it on me. You know I snagged that shit up. <laughs> Out the green room and at least chop us uncrustables all right guys i wanted to end the video off here talking about some stuff first off 13 minutes of yap oh my god it's about to get serious yo oh, look what we got i've been crumble seeing this cookie. all over my instagram i wanted to try it it's crumble cookies i've never had them before i've so never had them but i've heard they're very mid like if you're a fan of the channel you're probably familiar with some of the things that I've talked about regarding like mental health and stuff mm -hmm. in the past and some of the struggles I've had with that. You know, I put out a video a while ago on my second channel. I never promoted it or anything because that's not what it, it was about, but it was called Thoughts on Suicide. And in that video, I kind of went into some of the main struggles I've had throughout my life with 
mental health and things like that. Before we get too deep though, we gotta try one of these. I'm gonna try this blueberry one first. It's called like blueberry muffin or something. I like um, sweets that have like berries in it. So I think I'm gonna like this one. Here we go, this is the blueberry muffin. You can see if you do. It's pretty good. Really doughy though. I'll give it like a 7.2. Anyway, so one of the things that I talked about in that video and explained is how I've had this weird thing where it's always been like very difficult for me to be happy and to be joyful. And I've talked about having a breakdown in the past when this thought crossed my mind of, oh, I haven't ever been genuinely happy since you know, before I can remember what not being happy was like. And that kind of led to like a spiral. I still struggle with it. My mind goes to those dark places a lot. When things happen in my life that are negative, it goes to, you know, thoughts of suicide, which is something I've struggled with a lot throughout my life. I just want to talk about a few things that have helped shift my perspective kind of, because, you know, I sit here today with um some positive news and a positive outlook in the fact that this is probably the first time in my life where i've felt hope and not hope in like a oh, hope that i'm gonna achieve this hope that i'm gonna do this these tangible things and it's hope in the fact of like hope of that i could one day be a a happy person and live like a happy life i think just personally in here you know throughout like the youtube journey if you look at what we achieved and everything it's pretty amazing like what we did in a short period of time and don't ever get me wrong like i'm beyond grateful for everything super super grateful you know this was my dream but um i think one thing with that is that I locked in so hard with YouTube. I went so hard like the past two and a half, three years or whatever that I've been doing it. It was the only thing on my mind. And I think that is necessary to achieve, to get to like a high level at something, especially something like YouTube where it is extremely saturated. Everyone wants to do it and yeah. to really blow up and achieve that you have to it's have really that tough, mindset. Yo. But you know, a few months ago, I. I came to the dis discovery that um, I had progressed a lot as a YouTuber. You know, I blew up, achieved pretty much all the things I wanted to in this area, but everything else in my life, Decrease. personally, mentally, the, who I am as a human being was all still at the starting line. I haven't, I hadn't even looked at that. So. That's what to basically say his point. I know what he's trying to say. I might not watch this full thing through, you know, or I will, you know, see what he's trying to say. He's just trying to get his thoughts out. But yeah, that's why I like YouTubers like Corey Kenshin. If y'all watch that or know who he is, they take mental breaks because it's like this is all they know. But obviously they had to get here. You know, they're grateful to God. They're blessed. They're never saying that, you know that they wish they could do something else but yeah that's why it's like you really gotta keep god first or like yeah or keep the people he's gave you in your life like close but also learn how to grow spiritually and all of that stuff mentally and stuff yeah he was just growing i mean you could say accolade wise and this youtube game is tough y'all i still haven't even made it like i said i might get a smooth 10 15 views off this thing but i'm gonna still bust my butt but I do get what he's saying. You can lose yourself in the fact of that because it's sacrifices that you have to make. But man, man, it's a lonely road, Joe. But he going to get right. I'll pray for you, Lope, for real. But yeah, I'm probably just going to play maybe a few more minutes of it. But I do get what he's trying to say, sharing the life of things. But I think definitely breaks are needed for sure. I mean, I don't think he uploaded his video like two weeks later, so. It's kind of like a little bit of a break, I guess, but not really because he was doing things in those two weeks. I realized that and I was like, I need to address that and grow in that as well. Because YouTube, you know, it's great. It's my passion. It's what I do for a living. But at the end of the day, it is a job. And if I'm not 
progressing as a human being as well then what is all this for but before we get to the next point it's time for another cookie this one's like a, a peanut butter one it's got the i don't know what you call those muddy buddy things on it i don't really like that one as much i like sweet stuff but this this is like really like it's really rich it's like doughy almost that's a 6.8 all right so i didn't want to make this to go into the shit that has caused me to be unhappy depressed anxious whatever throughout my life that's not the point of this so i'm not gonna like go into the specifics on that but the first perspective change that has helped me tremendously as a person is identifying the problems of why i am the way i am and why i do the things i do and that might sound just like a bunch of words like some self-help bullshit but it's true so for the majority of my life I've thought that I'm just an angry person, but um, in going back and looking at what the root of that anger was, I made a bunch of discoveries. What I discovered is that I wasn't actually angry. I was using anger as a shield and as a, as a mask to, to cover up pain. That's really what it was. So basically things had happened to me when I was younger that made me feel weak, powerless, embarrassed, ashamed, um, scared, very, very scared. Fear was a big part of growing up for me. I've always felt afraid and, and a lot of things even emasculated kind of. So rather than ever opening up to people and letting them know like this is how I felt and this is how certain events made me feel, I would um, just put on a mask of anger because if I'm angry, then I'm tough. Nobody can get to me, nobody can hurt me. And I didn't realize that was a weak thing to do until pretty recently. Um, you know, it takes a lot more courage to actually point out what the root cause of that anger is and, and actually open up about the trauma and relive that and let, let people in to help you. Because there are people that care about you and want to help you and i didn't believe that for so many years and so many years i covered up insecurities and fears with anger you can't fix it like that like it's not an overnight thing where it's like None of it oh is. i found out oh this happened to me when i was a kid so that made me angry that pain doesn't just suddenly disappear when you find it out but when you address the the root problem and you and you acknowledge the root problem and find out what that is it at least allows you to recognize that you're not inherently an angry person i'm not inherently an angry person i had circumstances that happened to me that caused me pain so i'm really just hurting but then i cover that with anger and just like understanding that has helped me a lot it's time for another cookie guys this one's just like the regular ch chocolate chip one I like that. It's got some salt on it too. It like um, evens it out. It's like a seven, six. The next thing that has helped me a lot is realizing that this is not a linear journey. I put a lot of pressure on myself and I feel like that's one of the things that's helped me succeed in this career field. But I realized with this, with like self-development, you can't look at it as linear. When I found out the problems and when I committed to trying to be you know, a better human being, I still do constantly have like days where it feels like I'm back at square one and I, I fuck up, I do something where I'm like, damn, like I'm just like not growing at all. Like I'm resetting for a, a while. Like that would just discourage me and be like, I would think like, oh, I'm hopeless. But I had to realize like, it's not linear and that's okay. Like you're gonna have a lot of days where you feel like, oh, I'm improving a lot. And then you're gonna have a lot of days where you feel like, man, I'm just going back to zero. Most things in life, I think, that are worth doing are like that. They're not linear, they're up and down. Recognizing yeah. that that's gonna be the case takes a lot of weight off your shoulders because it allows you to give yourself room to mess up, which Thanks. every human being needs. And I definitely need, cause I fuck up a lot, guys. All right, let's try this last cookie right here. This is the pink sugar. It's got like pink sugar frosting on it. That's the best one for sure. I love sugar cookies. That's like an eight. 8.4 so the last thing that i wanted to touch on that's like helped me a lot and this is like very brief you know i'm keeping this very brief he mind him saying that's already off the serious point i do love sugar cookies too man shout out to my people that uh when you guys remember when mcdonald's used to serve sugar cookies and chocolate chip 
I used to buy the sugar cookies. I don't care if no one says. McDonald's sugar cookies were underrated. You can't tell me they were not. To all my sugar cookie lovers or cookies that love cookies like that are the frosted ones with the sugar, but the regular sugar cookies how McDonald's used to make them. Used to bust. Like, I literally can, like, it's like you can reminisce, you know, the taste of something. Like, I'm literally getting, uh, uh, what's the word? Nostalgia. There it is. Like, the nostalgic taste. No ditty. Like, really. No ditty. Chill. Of, like, the sugar cookie. Like, bro. They went crazy. But what I'm saying is serious, though. In the same way. I like both. But sugar cookies from McDonald's was overrated. Please tell me y'all remember and apple pies from McDonald's. Sue me. You tell me what's your favorite dessert. On TikTok, let me know. Obviously, I can't make like a three-hour video about this. Which and YouTube, I could, let me know what you're I can't do that. You know, it'll be video. way too long for this video. But I'm just going over a couple of the points that have helped me. And this one might sound weird to some people, but they helped me a lot. One of my favorite comedians' name is Bill Burr, and I heard him say, "Life doesn't give a fuck if you have a bad life." And like, I sat back and thought about that. I was like, "That is, that's actually very helpful." Because I do believe in like God and like doing good things will bring about good results. I believe in that. But think about this perspective of how life doesn't care if you have a good life or not. It shifted like me asking like, oh, why did these bad things happen to me? Why do these bad things continue to happen? I was asking why a lot. That kind yeah. of like almost took the power out of my hands because it's like these things are happening to me. Shifting to like life doesn't give a fuck if you have a good life or not it kind of put the power back in my hands because it was like, life doesn't care if you have a good relationship. Life doesn't care if you are successful. Life doesn't care if you're 35 years old, still living in your parents' house, you know, still playing the victim mentality, not achieving your dreams. Life doesn't care if you, if you go throughout your whole life and never do any of the things you want to do. It made me realize like, that's on me to like go and put in the work to change as a person because that's my biggest goal and that's Real talk. the goal i talked about in the video that i mentioned earlier all these external achievements are great but like my main goal is to just end up like being happy like that's Internal. my main thing i want to be happy and content and just live a, a good life like just as, as a human being and for a while i thought that was impossible but this sort of perspective helped shift that a lot Whereas like, I need to put in the work too. The same way you work on anything, the same way you work out physically, the same way I worked on YouTube. Like I gotta put in the work to becoming a better person. I gotta put in the work to becoming more patient with people, communicating better. You know, that quote of life doesn't give a fuck if you have a good life made me re really realize it's on me to do that because it's my life. I still struggle every single day with these mental battles and mental health is a big thing that I've always wanted to advocate for and I feel like not enough content creators do that. I feel like they're, a lot of it is like, just like flashy, like their highlight reel, they show you how great their life is. And you know, I'm very blessed obviously, but I wanted to open up the door of people talking about like their struggles mentally because I, I know a lot of people watching have those struggles too i mentioned that's why he left it in towards the end of the video because a lot of the girls that came up to him was like oh yeah i watch your videos no your videos like really touch me like we get deep and whoa okay no diddy like i didn't mean it like that but get your mind out together y'all I know y'all probably like, you're the only one who said no diddy but for real like the way they be like, oh his videos touch me like you never understand like so he knows but W video by love, because I already know the rest of it is just, you know, he's going to give things, be grateful.